Hello, welcome to ATC Loudspeakers. My name is Ben Lilly, Technical Sales Manager, and we're here at the ATC factory for a tour of the facilities with the team from Soundstage in Cockfosters, London. We're going to start with voice coil winding, which is where all of our loudspeakers start their life. Welcome to the voice coil winding room. All of the loudspeakers we produce here start their life in this room. First select pure copper wire, high temperature enameled for high reliability at high power levels. We exclusively wind ribbon voice coils, so flat ribbon profile voice coil uh, drive units. So we have to take our round wire and flatten it down on this machine. So the round wire is loaded into this end comes into this side of the machine, two hardened steel rollers. We're going to adjust the clearance between them using the vernier scale adjustment on the top. And then our ribbon voice coil wire is spooled on this following side. And we exclusively use a ribbon voice coil because it means we can pack more copper into the gap, approximately 30% more copper than a comparatively length, comparative length round wire coil and this gives us greater efficiency. It also means that a heat loss out of the coil is maximized. We then take our voice coil wire, load it into the tensioning system here, and it comes onto the winding heads. So we wind onto either aluminium or captain voice coil wire using high temperature phenolic adhesive. And there's a, a voice coil nearly complete here. We wind slightly oversized and then the finished voice calls are cleaned before going on to QC outside. Okay, so once the coils are wound, uh, they're slightly tacky enough to hold them together. Coils are wound slightly too large, so they have to come out to QC here, where they're sized down in terms of their physical length and also for electrical characteristic. All the coils we make are edge wound using a ribbon voice coil, so this gives us approximately 30% more copper in the gap over a round wire coil, driving up efficiency. Once the coils are sized, they have to be baked, which permanently sets the adhesive used in the voice coil winding. Finished coils are then ready for the next stage of processing where they come together with a suspension, cone and other diaphragm components. So next stage, voice coils come together with diaphragm components. Here they're being jigged with a cone and start to form something closer respect, uh, resembling a loudspeaker assembly. So step by step, uh, the rest of the components used in the loudspeaker assembly come together. Uh, moving on from where we were before with just the voice call and cone, here we can see the spider's been attached and the rubber surround. So the steel cores have now been ejected from the voice coil assembly and these are only a couple stages now away from coming together with the motor assemblies and taking the form of a finished loudspeaker drive unit. So we've looked at the assembly of uh, the loudspeaker software that we refer to. Now we come to this area where we work on the hardware. Uh, these are the uh, components that make up the magnetic assembly parts such as the back plate pole shown here, the magnet and front plate. So our, our motor assemblies are unmagnetized when we assemble them for ease of assembly but also for efficiency. Magnetizing a complete assembly gives us a slightly higher efficiency than magnetizing individual components. So the components are bolted together and then they're inserted, bolted together, bonded together and then magnetized. So the magnetizer is a very high power power supply with a specifically designed coil that creates a focused magnetic field in the centre. This aligns all the north and south poles in our assembly, magnetising the part. So this is our famous soft dome three inch mid-range. Uh, it forms a mainstay of all of our three-way systems uh, from the compact floor standard like the SCM40 all the way up to the biggest SCM300 main monitor. Um, it's got a unique set of characteristics, uh, very broad frequency range, high power handling. 
uh, and a very neutral characteristic uh, and was designed really off the back of um, our managing director Billy Woodman's one uh, love of piano and two his uh, realization when the company was founded in, in 74 that uh, the mid-range had for Billy it was, it was a key focus um, if he was to build a, a loudspeaker that really stood out from from the pack. Uh, our ears are most sensitive in the mid-range and it's where a lot of emotion, uh, it's where, where we communicate um, and, and as a result we're extremely sensitive to it. So the performance of all of our loudspeakers in the mid-range is key uh, and we never compromise performance in the mid-range, the balance of the speaker over its performance, the, the frequency extremes. And the three inch mid-range dome is really key to that. Uh, and is loved by people worldwide, be it in the professional the world of professional audio or in the world of hi-fi. So we've progressed from the bass driver and mid-range production and now we're in the tweeter production room uh, where we assemble our tweeters. Uh, two versions, one used in the mid-level products and the S version as used in the, in the high-level products. Uh, this is my colleague Richard Newman, he's going to tell you a little more about it. Okay, um, yeah for a long time we've made bass drivers and, and mid-range dome drivers. Um, over the last probably seven 10 years I think we, you know, we've been working on tweeters and for the last five years we've been installing our own tweeter in our, in our own products and now just about every model that we produce has um, an ATC tweeter in it. The design of the tweeter is quite unique in the marketplace in that you know, it takes um, a lot of cues from our mid-range dome. The idea initially was to try and scale down the mid-range dome into a 25mm device and that's what we've done you know, to the best of our ability really. It's a um, a little 25 millimeter tweeter on a mountain ring just like the mid-range dome loaded into a very very high powered um, neodymium magnet assembly um, what so um, what power level did you get out of the, the motor assembly on the tweeter rich um, on the s version tweeter it's got two tesla in in the gap which is a really high um, flux density um, that high flux density keeps the uh, third harmonic distortion particularly low um, the efficiency of the device high and the bandwidth of the, the device high too, so it has a, a very extended top end response. And then the goal is always trying to ensure that you know, our loudspeakers convey as accurately as possible the original material, you know, the original recorded material that's been sent to them. Um, we're always trying to produce systems that are capable of neutral fidelity and really high dynamic range. So all of these engineering methods um, and, and techniques and features of all these products, uh, they're all there with the end goal of delivering a product that's as truthful as possible to the original recorded material. Yeah. And with the tweets, so we tried to de develop a device that was you know, suitable for partnering with the mid-range dome, you know, the infamous um, ATC mid-range dome, and yeah. we feel like we've finally got that part. Yeah, the thinking was that if we could apply uh, materials and engineering that had been successful on the dome to a tweeter, not only we come out with a part that would perform very well, but it would also marry up very well with the rest of the system. So, and if you go all the way back to the beginning, um, having our own tweeter just meant that we could have our own philosophy across all the components used in the system. So we could ensure not only best possible performance, um, but best consistency across the range as well. Okay, so now we're in the uh, drive unit testing room. Um, as you can hear, we've got a drive unit hooked up to the power amplifier here for QC. So all of our drive units, all of our base drivers undergo, um, and mid-range drivers get undergo a very big, rigorous um, QC test once, uh, once assembly is complete. So depend, we test at a QC test um, at a minimum voltage level of 20 volts. Uh, this is quite stressful for the drive unit, but it ensures we eke out any problems in the driver before they go into a finished system and, and leave the factory. So here Toby is long-term testing uh, this base driver from SCM40, so at, at 25 volts. So it's got an extended period of test, thermal test initially, and then he'll sweep through its operating range to listen for any rub and buzz defects, glue joint defects or the like. We can also look, listen out for any loose particles in the gap, any buzzing type distortions, any badly made glue joints, loose windings of the voice coil. And it does look like quite an extreme test but uh, applying 
you know, a rigorous test here means we get much lower defects in the field. As well as the uh, manual test station we just looked at, we've also got an automated uh, test station based around a Clipple QC analyzer. So we've got a test chamber here, test microphone inside, and this allows us to characterize all of our mid-range drive units very quickly and very repeatable, you know, in a very repeatable fashion uh, without actually listening to them. The mid-range defects are harder to hear, and because the parts are much more efficient and our hearing is more sensitive in the mid-range, um, it's not something that we want to complete manually. So Rich is going to load up a mid and we'll complete the test procedure. Load it in, let me clamp it down to ensure that it doesn't move anywhere. And there's no air gaps around that. Connect it up to the system. Enter in a serial number so we can keep record of the drive unit. Um, press enter. So a series of tests are carried out. We measure the electrical response of the drive unit. We also measure the acoustic response and look for any distortion that might be present in the drive unit. And as you can see, this one's you know, got a nice clean response. It would pass. Like our loudspeaker drive units, uh, all of our electronics um, is built in-house, be it uh, standalone electronics, pre-amplifiers, power amplifiers, or source, uh, but also our active amp packs. So since the late 80s, we've been strong proponents of active loudspeakers, and that's a loudspeaker having its uh, signal processing and amplification all uh, dedicated to the, to the loudspeaker and housed in the loudspeaker cabinet. Active loudspeakers have the distinct advantage of giving greater control over the signal and a passive network. With a passive crossover, uh, you often make a compromise. Um, you're trying to, when you're during the design process, we're trying to optimize impedance phase and magnitude um, and these three parameters are all tied together um, so when you're modifying one to, to achieve greater performance in that area you're often compromising the other two. By going to an active system implementation uh, we can have better control over the time relationship of the signal and the frequency and level uh, relationship of the signal. We also have a dedicated amplifier channel for each band so if we look here we have a passive three-way network whereby the frequency uh, dividing network uh, occurs after the power amplifiers. Here we have the active amplifier with its active crossover network splitting into three bands and then having a dedicated amplifier channel per drive unit. This results in greater control over the base, greater efficiency and better control of the timing aspect um, and the end result is a, a more honest, more neutral, more musical result. In this area we have finished system assembly, so the drive units from the other building we saw earlier come together with the electronics from next door, um, systems are assembled with their cabinets and then we have final test whereby we ensure that all the electronics or passive crossover and drive units are all working together correctly to give us the uh, exact uh, right loudspeaker performance we're looking for. Okay, so final stage of the production process is system QC. Uh, so we've got a loudspeaker cabinet with passive crossover in it in this case. Uh, and we've got a QC system uh, manufactured by a German company called Klippel. They specialize in loudspeaker test and measurement. And we've got our test mi microphone. So we're gonna send a frequency sweep from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz through the loudspeaker that's gonna characterize the impedance and the frequency response of the loudspeaker and compare it to a golden reference, um, a system of known quantity that we'd standardized on at the um, start of the uh, life cycle of the SCM11. So Richard's gonna run the test sweep now. And now the power test. So the product's passed QC, it can be now matched up with its pair and packed before shipping to the end customer.
thanks to Dean and the team at Soundstage and Cockfosters for coming down for the day. I hope you enjoyed the tour around our factory and it's given you an insight into our products, our technology and our people. And thanks very much for watching. Thank you.